In our pop culture lead today, you guys, it gives me great joy to tell you that Conan O'Brien is returning to television. The award-winning comedian, late-night TV host, and podcaster is now starring in a new travel series called Conan O'Brien Must Go, which debuts next week on Max. And we should remind you that Max and CNN are both owned by Warner Brothers Discovery, but that's not why I'm doing this. The show is super funny. And guess who's joining us now? It's Conan! Hey! Conan's right here. Thank you so oh, much for being here. So, may I call you Jake? Is that you, okay? <laughs> you, Thank you. you may. You uh, may. Thanks for having me. This Appreciate is huge. It. Let's show. Uh, let's show folks a, a little clip uh, of you. This is a, a part of your trip to Norway. Yes, I went to Norway and uh, really got in touch with my uh, roots that I don't have there. But anyway, <laughs> take a look. Let's take a look. I'm Conan, the Red. Are my pants falling? I think my pants are falling oh, down. Yeah. <laughs> This is a travel show I'm doing. Oh, my. Where I visit my fans. Holy shit. <laughs> from around the world. We must embrace the way people do in this country, which is I'm supposed to kiss you, right? You're making it so weird. That's what I do. <laughs> I, it's true, though. I think we do need some weird right now. Tell me how the series came about. Well, I do a podcast uh, called Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend. I know, I've been on it twice. You've been on it twice. I just needed to tell you again, because I know you just blow your friends off <laughs> left and right. And um, I uh, and it, it grew and grew, and then we started, I mostly talked to celebrities, but I said I want to talk to people out in the world. And so we started taking calls from people all over, and occasionally a fan in the store farthest part of the world would say, hey, Conan, if you're ever in Bergen, Norway, stop by sometime. <laughs> and that gave me the notion. Had you ever heard of Bergen, Norway before? I had, I had no, I had heard of Norway. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think I'd specifically heard of Bergen. Yeah. But I said yes. And so what we do is we, you saw it in that clip right there, I surprise my fans. As, uh, <laughs> and so that was a kid named Yarla, who's half of a... Uh, Rapping a, duo. A rapping duo. <laughs> he looks like Daniel Radcliffe, and and uh, except he, not as muscular. Not as muscular <laughs> as Daniel Radcliffe, and um, and he's a very sweet kid, and they're actually a very uh, talented uh, duo. But I surprised him, so that's me ringing his doorbell, and he's and I and I disguise my voice. You don't see it there, but I go uh, baggage FedEx, and then he comes down, and he was really excited, and then I proceed to go and tear up his apartment, and then get involved in his musical life. And I'm determined to put uh, he and his uh, friend at the top of the charts. That's pretty good. You have a you you provide some of the the singing, the bridge. I I thought I should do a, a bridge, uh, the way you know Sting used to sometimes sing the bridge on someone <laughs> else's song. Yours is about a fjord, though. Mine course. is about a salmon and a fjord, <laughs> but it's in my patented Irish falsetto. So you you hosted Conan on TBS for ten years, then mm -hmm. you started Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, your yeah. your podcast. Then yep. you made the spinoff Conan O'Brien Needs a Fan. Yes. Um, and I, I want to play a clip of you comparing your job to a fish farmer in Norway. Here we go. I am not envious because, Kai, what I do is very similar. No, oh. no. Uh -oh. I come out here. I don't know if the if the temperature in the podcast booth is going to be 71 or 72. I don't know if my if the iced tea they got me is going to be completely unsweetened or have a little bit of sugar. So oh. I, too, am battling the elements no. in my own way. Absolutely. I'm so happy that I'm up here in the, in the Arctic and not down there. It's, I'm, I'm so glad for that. <laughs> you're, what you just said... So, so, Kai, you're just very happy that you're, that you're you and not me. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah that's sort of what I'm saying. I, I can't imagine <laughs> being able to... I have to say, like, you're so great uh, when you're interviewing celebrity guests and such, but, like, you you really seem to love interacting with normies. I, I, I love talking to people. That is a guy, uh, Kai, who is a salmon fisherman, salmon farmer, and uh, I... After I meet one of the fans, he's another one of the fans, uh, I go up and I find him and I go out on his boat and try and... He's having a difficult time with uh, his partner on the boat who helps him... Uh, find the salmon or grow the salmon. And so I try and get them to be friends again. Uh, and so it's just a joy. It's really fun. I love, my favorite thing is meeting people who, uh, I'm constantly bumping into people who don't know who I am, 
They're not that impressed. <laughs> and I egg them on until they really put me down. And I don't know why, but it makes me so happy. <laughs> that, that guy on the street. That There's a guy on the street who's criticizing my jacket. He says that ja the jacket you're trying to wear makes you, you're trying to look too young. And he, we really get into it. And I, I love it. It makes me happy. So, and you go to Norway, Thailand, Argentina, Ireland. Ireland, yeah. What, what were, was any one more fun than the other? I, you know, they're all very different. Uh, the one thing that was fantastic and interesting about Thailand, what it was, it was, uh, a bunch of months ago, it was the hottest day they'd ever had in Thailand. It was like 108 degrees or 109 degrees. And so when you're doing improvisational comedy, as you're sweating out your body weight, <laughs> it's fascinating. But it was really, it was fun. Uh, and I cannot say I liked one country more than another. Each of the specials is very different, but they were really fun to do. So you also made some history this week. You returned to The Tonight Show. Yeah. Uh, 14 years after your time there ended, you sat down with Jimmy Fallon and you reminded him of some advice that was really really hitting home for you at in that moment let's run that clip you'll have this show as long as you want it but when you're 98 you'll move on and someone else <laughs> someone else will be in this studio yeah. when someone else is in your studio it feels weird so i walked in and i said who's in my old studio and they said kelly clarkson yeah and i i love kelly clarkson yeah. who doesn't love kelly clarkson but still i felt like it's not right <laughs> It should be a museum! Blasphemy! It should be a museum! They should have burned it to the ground! <laughs> what was it like to be back in that studio? Uh, it was a great feeling. I didn't actually... Um, Jimmy's studio is across the hall, so he's in 6B. I was in 6A, which was this iconic studio that David Letterman had from, I think, 1981 to 93. And, uh, and, and my studio um, was... I, I went into the same studio as Dave, so uh, Jimmy's across the hall. I didn't go in and look. Oh, really? But it felt very nice to just be back on that floor. And there were still some people who came out who are still working at NBC who were there when I was there. And so it was very emotional. You know, they came out and they're gray hair. And you're like, remember <laughs> me? And I was hugging people. And it was a very sweet uh, feeling. It was so nice to be back and, and see Fallon everybody. couldn't have been nicer. He was oh, just... oh, he was great yeah. and he's done an amazing job and uh, I'm a fan and I think it all, uh, whatever happened all those years ago, it all worked out beautifully for everybody and so uh, it, was a, it was a nice return. It really was. Um, before we go, I have to ask you uh, about something in the news today. Yep. Um, O.J. Simpson died. Yes. And uh, yes. he was a lot of fodder for you and a lot of other late night comedians yeah, during a, that era. Yeah, it was a huge deal back then. Uh, most notably, uh, he's he's passed on uh, Norm MacDonald. Oh my God, yeah. One of my uh, best uh, guests of all time and one of the great comedians of all time. Um, just told some of the most, did the most brilliant, I think, comedy of anybody. Uh, during that whole period. Lost his job at SNL because he was making fun of O.J. Simpson for being the real killer. Yes, and um, and and the head of the network at the time was was tight with O.J. and... Uh, and Don and, Olmeyer? Yeah, yeah, and... Oh, uh, who can remember these names? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, water under the bridge. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was uh, a huge moment in uh, in the history. I think of this country, it was, it was, a, it was a, you know, massive... I mean, there have been many times in this country where we've needed to kind of stop and reassess uh, where we are in our racial history and yeah. how, where are we, what progress have we made, and that was one of those moments. It was such a watershed moment, so he is gone now. Yeah. Yeah. You have no, you're not going to make any jokes about it? Oh, I, I never make a joke about someone the day they pass. Okay, I'll hit you up tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow at 6 a.m. You can hit me up. <laughs> That's right. just my... It's, East Coast time. <laughs> East Coast time. Uh, Pacific? No, Central. Central, Central. okay. Yeah. I'll hit you at 7.30. Yeah. Conan O'Brien, thanks so much. Uh, you really must watch Conan O'Brien Must Go, his new series. It's on uh, Max uh, starting April 18th.